All right, welcome to the second part of our series um, on home ownership and the path to home ownership. My name is Matt Sochi. I am your host. I'm also alongside Eric Watson, Mark Jackson. All right, welcome, guys. Um, last week or last episode, we had a great discussion on the paths to um, home ownership and what that kind of entails. And we talked a little bit about that, but today we're going to dive a little bit deeper. So we're going to talk about understanding the pre approval process. I think this is a big topic. It really is the meat and potatoes of the first step in actually making an offer on a home. Probably the most important step. Absolutely. You know, there's so many things that go into getting qualified and pre-approved. And then the steps out to that are actually where it becomes a little bit more fun, you know, I think, in my opinion. So we're going to kind of guide you guys through that, um, talk about what the pre-approval process looks like. So if you're out there looking to buy or have not bought yet, or maybe you bought a home 20 years ago, a lot of things have changed since 2008. We're going to get you prepared for those next steps. We're going to talk about a a couple different things. So that way you're ready to buy that next home. So the first thing is, you know, talking about the pre-approval process um, and its significance. So um, on our end, as mortgage loan originators, our job is to talk to clients, um, usually from our realtor referrals or different avenues that we get clients from, and then have that discussion on getting them pre-approved. And it's very, very important, especially in this market. Um, I think COVID was definitely where it got really crazy because there were so many offers on different homes. But Getting pre-approved is really the key to the success of the journey to getting the keys to the home. So um, the importance behind that and what we're going to talk about is all the different things that go through that and how you can get prepared for those next steps on your journey. Um, So Eric, why is the pre-approval essential for first-time homebuyers and how does it differ from a pre-qualification? Essentially what most at least in the state of Florida, I can speak speak to that. Um, realtors are going to want before they're ever going to take anybody out to go shopping for homes per se would be an actual pre-approval because the pre-approval process at the end of the day means that somebody like Mark, myself, Matt has basically verified and validated that a p- potential home buyer is who they are. They say they are one that their credit score, which is really the report card on their credit history and their ability to pay back any debt they've previously incurred, uh, is obviously in good standing. Then we need to verify and validate their income. And we mentioned on the previous show that we wanted ideally two years of similar work history in a similar field. And part of that process, the ultimate validation of it is show me your pay stubs. So we would require two months of pay stubs to verify and validate that the income adds up to what I'm sure the borrower shared in conversation. And then we need to verify and validate the liabilities that come with that. So in other words, do you have outstanding credit uh, or do you have outstanding student loan debt? Do you have outstanding credit card debt? Do you have outstanding automobile loans? those sort of things and and really what they're looking for and what a lender is looking for in that process is to know that you have the room in your budget to make that monthly payment and not default on the loan right you mentioned that in the last episode so what's the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval pre-qualification is less formal like what's the big biggest difference the biggest difference is in a pre-approval i've laid eyes on all of those documents i've run the credit check And I know that I'm putting my name on a piece of paper so that both the borrower's real estate agent and the potential seller's real estate agent knows that that income, those liabilities, that credit score, all of that information has been verified and validated. Yeah, I talked to a client not too long ago that went online to get, you know, pre-approved. And I was like, oh, okay. So you already submitted all your documents, your W-2s, your pay stubs, you pulled your credit, all those fun things. And it's like, no. I'm word like, of mouth. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you got a word, of, word of mouth pre uh, pre uh, qualification, and I'm like, all right, well, we're gonna start over, and we're gonna do the real deal now. And they're like, whoa, you know, that's a lot different than what they went through, and that's a big thing out there is that a lot of people in this market, you know, they do have what I call foo foo, you know, pre approvals, and that's where it comes in when you work with somebody like us at Premier Mortgage Consultants is that we do 
soup to nuts, everything, so it's bulletproof. How about Mark? Um, what are some you know scenarios or highlights, and what are the benefits of being pre-approved? Well, you know, the pre-approval, um, especially the one we do here, where it's legit form of credit and really looking at things uh, a little bit closer, actually a lot closer probably than pre-qualification, shows the strength of your offer. And today's market, it's just not likely that you're going to... Uh, be able to even look at homes. You may be able to look at homes, but uh, your offer is probably not going to be taken seriously unless you have a pre-approval. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why sometimes realtors go out and, and maybe it's the fear of them, uh, the client, buy, if getting another realtor and showing them homes and then they're surprised when it doesn't work out, right? Or they don't understand that the, the clients don't understand that, you know, what they're looking for is out of their budget. And I think that's a big thing is because our job is when we work with our realtor partners, we don't want to waste their time and they don't want to waste our time right even though for our time like we enjoy talking to people and if they're not ready now and the whole theory behind this is the path to home ownership is that if they're not ready now they will be ready i have people that reached out over easter with my crm and i haven't talked to them in three years and all of a sudden like hey we've been watching you and listening and doing the things you told us to do and i think we're ready now and that's the whole purpose of this right is the path so very valid point there as well so um it, it bulletproofs your de- your um your deal and, and I think it's worth noting, too, that we use uh, uh, proprietary software that we pay an annual subscription for. And when we issue that pre-approval letter to our client and ultimately their representing real estate agent, they know we have run their file through the exact same uh, set of parameters and gauntlet of approvals that are in the federally controlled guidelines so they know that as you mentioned it really is a bulletproof pre-approval yeah if we submit that file to a lender run it through underwriting we know we're going to get conditional approval and there really probably won't be that many conditions yeah it's spot on all right well let's talk a little bit about the documents that are required so a lot of people have questions like oh what do i need to get pre-approved um and i'm going to list out a couple of them so i think the most important actually i know the most important one is obviously um income right and for us what that means is if you're self-employed that means we need your two years of tax returns if you have a corporation you will need your uh, business returns as well as your personal um and if you're a wage earner simple just your last two years of w-2 so if you had the same job very easy um if you have multiple jobs um we would need all of them to put together the two-year work history after that is assets because it's good for us to know how much money are we working with some people are kind of scared like oh you know if they have twenty i i'm like listen we don't need to use all your money but it helps strengthen your pre-approval with reserves and stuff like that and um so we got um assets income what else do we really need I liabilities think, well liabilities well, that goes and, with credit check but. yeah and, and i say assets and income <laughs> we are going to need two years of worth of w-2s or in the self-employed we want those taxes because that illustrates a trend of the income not just hey i've had a job for six months or i've had you know been employed in this particular field for a shorter duration of time it establishes over a two-year time frame the consistency of the income so that at the end of the day the lender knows that there's a good significant probability they're going to be able to meet the demands of whatever that monthly mortgage ends up. Well, and we'll go into uh, uh, other episodes where we talk about if you are self-employed, we have this whole other sector of mortgages (laughs) where, you know, we could get around all that called the non-qualified mortgage sector. So if you're self-employed, stay tuned. We're going to have those episodes coming up um, in the future. So we talked about the documents and everything. Eric, what about like when you talk to clients sometimes and you know you say hey listen we need this and they're like oh my god i don't know how to get that so let's talk a little bit about how can we help people game plan if they're not buying right now but to be prepared if it's over the summer what kind of like tips and tricks do you have for them uh you're obviously going to need your w-2s as we previously mentioned and i think the next thing that you're going to have to have is uh, bank statements so you're going to log on to your personal banking loan accounts uh with whatever lender you have, or not lender, but actual bank that you work with, and download copies of those bank statements in PDF format. You cannot take pictures of your bank statements. Um, and, and we, unfortunately, you know, we get folks that try and do that from time to time because they're not familiar with the you process. You can't take 35 pictures of your Wells Fargo account? 
you know, and unfortunately, the reason that you can't is at some point in time, somebody took pictures and then photoshopped the financial information, either changed account numbers and or changed balances and took advantage somewhere, somehow. So the lenders all prefer PDF format bank statements. Exactly. So, and again, if you have, um, if you don't have those documents on hand now, now is a good time to start digging them up. And a good best practice I always tell people, and I do it for myself now, is always keep a folder on your desktop or in a secure place where you could access, you know, um, if you're variable income, a waitress or overtime, last pay stub of each year. So we could determine what that income is. Um, W-2s, keep them in a file so that way it's really easily accessible so you're not trying to log into some HR website that for a job you don't work for anymore, etc. So just keep those on hand. It definitely makes it a, um, a lot easier. And then Mark, I think you had some piece to add to that. Well, you guys cover most of it, but uh, you know it seems like a daunting task to collect all the documents you're going to need. But uh, really, everything's computerized today. And like Matt said, make a folder. Uh, even if you're not looking right now, make a folder of the information, your tax returns, your W-2s, your bank statements. So they'll be there when you're ready. And uh, it, just make a list for what you're all going to need and keep it in the file. And you, know, you may need it for other things also. Yeah. You know, just to have access to it quickly will help you. So a lot of people get concerned with the bank statements. Most, you can go on any bank. I don't know of any nowadays where you can't just go onto their website. Not that part. Looking at all the stuff that they spend their money on. <laughs> I can't help <laughs> you with that. But, you know. I had, she goes, don't judge. We eat out a lot and order a lot of DoorDash. I was like, honestly, I don't even look at the bank statement except for the number. I just want to know how much assets you have. Now, if there's you know not sufficient funds and you you know you have um, uh, over deposits, overdrafts, that can be an issue because on manual underwrites you can't have those. So we're not looking to see that you know you're spending money at you know ABC Liquor or um, <laughs> Total Wine, Total Wine <laughs> or DoorDash. We don't care. We're not looking at it. Really, what the underwriters are looking for is a you don't have any um, overdrafts. Number one, number two. Sometimes people have buy here, pay your cars where you don't have a note, but you pay it, and then they pick up on that. So another tip or trick. Um, you know, if you have anything like that, be transparent with us. But that's all they're looking at for the bank statements. So just as an FI out there, we don't look or care unless Oops. something yeah. pops up. They, they just look at large transactions. So if you have thousands of dollars oh, good one. transactions moving money in and moving at money out, then there's a high degree of probability at some point in time an underwriter is going to ask questions. It's got to be sourced. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Anything over 1% of the loan amount for FHA and anything 50% or higher of your income on conventional loan. So if you make ten grand a month and you have a deposit for seven grand outside of payroll, you're going to need to be able to source that, or those that those assets can't be used. So just something to pick up on there. So yeah, no, no worries. We're not we're not the CIA. We're not inspectors. It does not matter. To us. <laughs> um, all right. So the application process. So this is kind of our favorite part. I think is just really getting to know who we're working with and. How it kind of works is, you know, for me, I do have a loan officer assistant, but, you know, at times um, we both tackle it. So it's really just having the the first conversation. And I think that's the most exciting one because then we get to understand and know who we're working with. And um, we we have different tools that, you know, we use, such as we call it the four boxes. You know, we talk about income, assets, jobs, credit, liabilities, etc. But we really want to understand their scenario. Everyone has a different scenario where they're coming from. So it's initially, my process is we get them to fill out our pre-application. Very simple. takes about five minutes to fill out. Um, I just had an 82-year-old fill it out in four and a half minutes. New record. Ding, ding, ding. Um, It's very easy and simple. We did that on purpose so that people aren't taking 30 minutes out of their day to fill out an application. Um, Once they fill out the application, they upload their docs to a secure portal. So those are the documents we just talked about. Um, we never pull credit without having our mortgage consultation first. That means just after we get that, the pre-app tells us the story. That's what I always tell people. It tells the story. My realtor partners all know. Have them tell the story. Then I schedule a call. Probably a five-minute conversation. Sometimes we become best friends. It might be 30 minutes. Um, but it's just really understanding if everything sounds good. Then we go to the next steps, pull the credit, get the docs uh, verified. 
and then we run it through our desktop underwriter, which gives us the initial approval. Um, if it's all good, check marks. And then we issued a letter. And the cool thing with our company and how we do it is with the letter is that it gives the realtor and the borrower um, the opportunity to change the pre-approval lower. So we kind of max it out. So that way, if Mark is mowing his lawn on a Saturday afternoon and 911, we need to lower the pre-approval price, whatever, you could do it yourself and regenerate that PDF. And I think that's fantastic. And um, a lot of people don't do that. They have a Word document and you got to be kind of in front of the computer to do that. So that's a little bit about our process and how we do it. And typically, and Eric's going to talk about that, is, um, you know, once we have that um how long does it take to do a pre-approval? We can typically do them, you know, it really is up to the borrower. You know, when they initially fill out that application, they're going to be prompted by the software to upload all of those documents, your your bank statements, your previous uh, two pay stubs, copy of your driver's license, you know, sort of those things that we're going to need to validate your identity, one, mm-hmm. two, validate your income, Three, validate the available funds that are for going to be used for earnest money deposit and or closing costs. And then obviously we're going to figure out the liabilities once we run credit. And I, there's also some other questions that typically we like to ask in there. Hey, do you have any recent uh, big purchases that may not show up on your credit report? Um, what's your history like on making rental payments, especially as a new first time home buyer? There's a lot of lenders that are going to do verification of rent form. And they're going to ask whomever you're paying rent to, how many times have you been late? And those are the little nuances that a seasoned professional is going to know that could be a potential stumbling block. So really, that's what we do here at Premier Mortgage Consultants. We're familiar with a lot of those. We're seasoned professionals, passionate about what we do. So when we get into this pre-approval process, we've covered all of those points. Typically, we can get a pre-approval out in an hour, sometimes two. And if it's a little bit more complicated, you know, if they're self-employed or have rental properties, there's a lot more that goes into that. But, you know, focusing on first time home buyers that are wage earners, same day for sure. And absolutely, we don't work just for everybody out there. We are not Monday through Friday, eight to five or whatever. We're not a bank. We are we all work individually for ourselves. So if you need a pre-approval on a Sunday afternoon, there's a good chance Eric's going to be free. Mark's going to be free. I'm going to be free. Eric, you were talking about how you were on the phone last night at 10 o'clock at night with a client. Um, We don't have hours. And that's why people like us because you're going to have that communication, you know, no matter what. You know, that goes from our realtor to the buyers, our operations team. It's all in-house. We're all family. You know, and that's a big piece there. And then Mark, um, talking about that. So, well, I just want to add that <clears throat> whenever you do complete the prep, just make sure you include all of your assets, all of your, you know, just the information that's there. Just make sure it's complete. And, you know, just we will find out if there's something, uh, the lender will find out if you miss something, if you're, you know, a co-signer on your brother's condo or whatever it is, it will come up through the process. And it's just going to make everything much smoother if you just sort of lay it all out there on the table. So for the record, the lenders are the CIA. So they do run Lexus Nexus. And Mark, <laughs> uh, Mark you actually just had a situation like that yeah. where <clears throat> if you want to talk real quick about it. Well, uh, the, the, the borrower what? just didn't disclose everything to us on the uh, application. And uh, it just it comes up, you know, the, the searches they do are extensive. The uh, information, they'll find it. And, uh, it, it you know, once we figured it out, we had to take a few steps to work around it. It worked fine and the deal closed, but it just slowed it down a little bit when you have unexpected things come up. Yeah. And that's where in the conversation, like I love when clients say I'm just being transparent with you. I was like, listen, I'm on your side. You yeah, know, and that's what everyone sure. needs to understand. We're on your side. We don't work for a bank. We're the advocates. Yeah, we're, we're the advocates in the middle man, so, or middle woman. So we are here on your side. We want to understand everything and know everything so that way we can structure it the right way and we don't have to worry about any of those issues. Yeah, ever. we want it to work for you the best way as possible. We want you to be happy because if you're not happy, it's not going to work out well for us either. Yeah, and, and we don't want to get three quarters of the way through and all of a sudden bust because something came up that we didn't know about either. Because, exactly. you know, our, our processors do work very hard um, to get all the deals through the door. So, you know, the benefits of being pre-approved, I think this is very, very important, is that 
you know, I run into this a lot, I talk about a lot, is payment shock is number one. There's a lot of people, and what payment shock means is if you're used to making a payment, let's just say 2000 and you're buying in today's market at 450000 that payment is 3500 a month. That's a $1,500 a month payment shock, right? And you might love, love the house, and it might work on our end debt-to-income ratio-wise, but it's still a payment shock. So I think being pre-approved up front, even if you're not looking right now, and maybe it's over the summer, our pre-approvals, for the record, the credit report's good for 120 days. So that gives you four months to close on a house. And all we got to do if it goes past that is just re-pull the credit, you know, just because things change, you know, people lose debt, gain debt, whatever. So it's very, very important because payment shock, I think, is a huge thing right now because interest rates are high and it's not forever. And we have we'll talk about that in another episode, the different programs that we have. We'll deep dive into all the programs because we have buy downs and a whole bunch of different stuff to help offset that. But our job is to bullet proof your deal make sure you are guaranteed to get that house and i will tell you and i'm talking about our company as a whole because i can speak for myself but i know from the company level every single contract that we put in guarantees a close i haven't seen anything fall through unless it's a condo that's non-warrantable or it's an appraisal issue or an inspection issue it's never a client income asset issue i've, I've had a couple fail in, in all honesty, not to not to be a fly in the glass of wine or anything like that, but it goes back to our our client, our borrower failing to disclose something, right. and for some odd reason we don't see it on the credit report, but the underwriter has access to databases and information that we don't necessarily always have access to, and boom, surprise, yeah. <laughs> Surprises are not good in our industry. No, absolutely not. We despise them. Don't make big purchases uh, prior to closing. That that was one of the examples. You know, somebody went out and bought a nice brand spanking new pickup truck a couple weeks before closing and tipped the deal to approve. So when things are out of our control, exactly, we have no control. So yeah, when things are in our control, they always close. Always. And, and we school our clients on that as well. We have to. Hey, don't don't be don't do your credit. Don't be taking over anybody's debt and save your money. You know, you can't, you got to have enough to close and, and all Absolutely. that stuff at the end. Um, what about, you know, what does a pre approval do as far as for the client when maybe they're looking at properties? And either or. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Good. Okay. You're the um, seasoned. When, when the client or ultimately the client's uh, real estate agent, hands that pre-approval letter over with an offer, with a, a genuine offer, then the seller's agent is obviously going to review that and know that this is a bona fide, good faith offer on to purchase the property. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I can just, you know, <clears throat> relay how it affected me. And when the last time I bought a house, we bought a house in Golden Gate Estates here in Naples. And, uh, Honestly, it was a dream house, and it was super undervalued. <clears throat> so we came in, and we were pre-approved. And honestly, there are so many people looking at it that if it wasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, if it was not, uh, if we hadn't been pre-approved, there's no way we would have got because there was 10 people standing behind us ready to pay. Yeah, no, for sure. And they're going to look at that. And I'll tell you what, like, with the realtors I do work with, I always make sure when you put in that offer, copy me on the email. I like to jump in and say, hey, just want to introduce myself. And that's a big thing, too, is and this will probably be our next episode is after you're pre-approved, what are the next steps? And working with a great realtor and a, a great mortgage person, a team, it makes this flawless. And I'll tell you, I've personally probably done over 500 loans and I sell a lot of them because I I open myself and give myself to you know up to the listing agent to have that discussion you know to to really bulletproof and validate our client and i think that's a big piece there is that it it's the best thing that you could possibly do is make sure you're working with a great mortgage person and make sure you're working with a great realtor and make sure if they work together that's like you have the ultimate dream team the ultimate you dream do. team communication fosters cohesiveness a hundred percent <clears throat> your loan officer and you know the real estate agent should be making the process as smooth and painless as possible and like you said as a team 
they'll find you what you need and get you the right loan. I mean, we're obligated to, you know, give people information that's going to give them the right loan for their situation. Yeah, absolutely. And trust me, I've done crazy deals. I was like, give us a 14 finance, 14 day finance contingency, which is normally 30. Give us a 21 day, you know, whatever, and we'll have it all closed 30 days or less. And then our typical closing times, high two weeks, typical business days. So 10 to 14 business days, um, depending on everyone, titles got to move, assurance has got to move, the appraisal. There's a lot of moving parts with that. But if everything's clean and easy, and I've gotten clear closes in seven business days. If you see stuff online that says three business days, it's not even possible. Just FYI for the record. <laughs> I see it all the time. I'm like, well, per trade, you got to wait eight days, you know, from submitting to not. So um, the, the last thing is in not every loan originator or company has access to this is what I like to call a VAL. Right. And VAL, what is it's, it's a verified approval letter. Okay. So something really neat with this is that we could actually submit the file to a lender. We have a few of them that will do these as a to be determined. It actually goes through underwriting. You have an underwriter. That means underwriter. It's like you had a contract, right? They underwrite everything, uh, assets, credit, DU, which is desktop underwriter for the approval. If it's conventional FHA, VA, whatever it's going to be. And they guarantee that it's going to be bulletproof as long as insurance, the appraisal, and title are cleared. And that's, that's before a uh, property has been identified, right? Correct. So once you get a contract, all you got to do is update it, put in the address. It goes to TRID, which means disclosures are going out. And you're pre- there, you, there's nothing left for the borrower to really do. Yep. Just pick an insurance company. Makes it easy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that we offer. And I use it a lot when I have variable income or anything outside the ordinary, just because it's good to have a legitimate second eye on it. Um, so that's something that we offer for our clients too, is verified approval letter, which also makes your closings extremely faster. And then you actually get an, another letter on top of our pre-approval letter that it's verified approval letter. Like it's been by an underwriter and not by me, Eric Mark, or Johnny from Johnny's bank down the road. <laughs> so um, do you guys have anything to add? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I think we've covered just about everything that you need as far as like the, the pre-approval process mm-hmm. leading up to, hey, I'm going to put an offer in on a home. And I have to say, I've only been doing this for a month or two and uh you know, the way that um, Premier Mortgage Consultants has worked and from what I've seen in my years of <clears throat> working in the bank, you know, uh, it's we do everybody outside the box. Every single deal is individual uh, as you are, as we all are. And uh, it's just been amazing to see how hard everybody works here to make the deal work for the client. I forgot my new slogan is PMC. We make lending easy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's easy, but. We'll make it work. Yeah, it's it's really not that big of a process. It really isn't. Um, once you've got a few loans under your belt, you you've seen it all. You know, <clears throat> I've been through every possible. Uh, not every. But I've got a new one the other day. I was like, I haven't seen that yet. Um, but it's really it's not rocket science. And a lot of you out there are going to be the easy pre approvals and. The nice thing is with us, and we alluded to it yesterday, is that we do have 49, thank you, Mark, 49 different lenders, which means you get to go shopping for 49 different rates, 49 different products, whatever it is. We got it all. So um, we do the extremely tough deals, and we do the extremely easy deals. So um, just keep that in mind. If you are a realtor out there or a potential buyer down the road, is that if we can't make it work, I promise you, there is not one person in this world that will. We got it all. We got it all. Um, all right. Well, great, great chat with everybody. Great information. Um, nothing to add. So we are going to kick off our next series, which will be our third episode, which is going to be what are the next steps after you get pre-approved? What are the next steps? And we will probably have a guest with us, um, a realtor, and hopefully um, we can get that all squared away. So 
thank you everybody for listening and watching and if you guys have any questions at all feel free to send us a message and we would love to work with you if we haven't already thank you for listening to beyond the blueprint